Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle. Welcome to my channel. I have been gone for forever, like a year or more, I think. So I feel like the first video should be either a reintroduction or an explanation. Perhaps both. Um, okay, so let's start off with the explanation. Illness. Um, I know I talked about a year ago, maybe two years ago, that I had been having some health issues and I talked about that being solved by vitamin B shots because it turned out that I was just really vitamin B deficient. There was actually a second medical thing um, that was less scary in that it wasn't causing me chest pain that made me think I was having a heart attack. Uh, but it was actually extraordinarily painful, um, like it was debilitating levels of pain and getting dressed, sitting, standing, walking, all of those things hurt um, and I think at some point I just kind of got overwhelmed and I didn't, I just didn't have the energy to be bothered with an extra thing and making videos is always going to be an extra thing um, because it's not a high priority so it was something that I had to just let go. Um, I did spend some time in hospital about a week after they figured out what the problem was um, but it took a few months for the problem to actually clear up because it's one of those things where um, you address the issue but then there's a long recovery process so I've been okay for a few weeks now I think a few months actually um, so yeah I'm giving this a go again and what I've decided to do is um, actually bulk film to see if I can get everything to actually work if I'm not trying to make time for this every week and instead I got distracted and now I don't know where I was up to in my explanation. I think I had said that I have been well for a while now and I think I had the issue under control. Time to start, you know, getting back onto things. So that's pretty much where I've been at. Um, I have a few updates. I have finished my Camino story in its entirety and submitted it. And I have just enrolled to do a PhD. So, pause here. <sighs> Many years ago I went to an event when this book was first released. This um, came out on the heels of Catherine Chidgey's uh, The Wish Child and I had known her for, um, I don't know, several years prior to that. So I went to the thing, got the book and was telling her what I was going to do with my life and what I was doing with my new job and stuff and she wrote don't write the PhD, write the novel in 2017. I have always maintained that I can do two things. I've written the novel, now I'm starting the PhD. Which means that I theoretically could maybe have a whole bunch of like PhD related content over the next four years or maybe I'll have no content at all because oh my god the workload because that's kind of the thing right like a a huge number of people uh, go on to graduate study and they find the workload quite a lot and particularly at PhD level because it's all on you and yeah, like there's spikes in mental health problems and those sorts of things for people getting a PhD. 
but a PhD is full-time research for a number of years. That is my current job. I am a full-time researcher. The stakes are different because currently I'm just doing it for money instead of for progre career progression, but it's still kind of the same jam, you know? I'll have less money, which is terrifying, uh, and I'm gonna have to spend the entirety of my savings just to get there because I'm not doing it in New Zealand, I'm doing it in the UK. And that means uh, all my savings immediately half in their value once I get there and I have to do things like buy flights and pay for visas and deposits on accommodation and things in a currency that is worth more than double what my current currency is. So yeah, it's it's an expensive step to get over there. Um, but that's kind of the stress to me, like the knowing the stakes is definitely a stressor, but the actual work that needs to be done is kind of like I've already got experience doing research and quite a lot of experience doing research. I know that game. So it really just leaves that distance from family and financial is kind of the two pressures that I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, and distance from family is probably not going to be that big of a deal. My mother, who is enthusiasm incarnate, booked flights to come see me for Christmas before I, I had even accepted the offer. Um, I have an uncle in Scotland so if I, I get super lonely I can just show up in his door and be like love me and yeah like I'm not going to be turned away from my own family's door so that's fine uh, and I also have a niece who is looking to relocate to Spain next year um, obviously it's a different country but it's not a horrifically expensive flight if I felt that I desperately needed to see her you know um so yeah that's what i'm up to there's there hasn't been a lot to talk about for the last year right like i've been sick i've been very very slowly plodding away at the, the to-do list for my book but it's such a slow rate it didn't feel like there's any point in making a video and then i was too sick to make a video anyway so i just stopped trying um and now all of a sudden like, I I completed my book and had it ready for submission the same month that I got the interview for the PhD position. Like, everything's just suddenly all at once, which is a lot, uh, but it means that theoretically there should be content. So what I'm going to be doing going forward is committing to bulk filming, so like one day a month make several videos um, and then maybe just use any filming that I do in between just as like um, opportunities for b-roll kind of stuff not sit down and go over the whole big thing and do like you know daily filming to make vlogs for the week or anything like that like no no time for that nonsense um, I'll have to see when I get there if there's going to be any opportunities for me making content relevant to the PhD situation. Um, okay. I've done research before but I've never done a PhD before. Um, I don't know. Uh, and I also don't know where I'm going to be living until I know what my situation is. I don't know how socially comfortable I'm going to be filming. Like. Am I even going to have space to set up a tripod and blah blah in whatever room I have? Am I going to be sharing spaces? I don't know. Um, I do know obviously I'll have my own bedroom, like sharing bedrooms is not a thing. Um, which I understand is like very normal in the States, but no. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So yeah, lots of excitement, but very uh, scary because I don't know. Like 
don't know where we're living, don't know I guess how hard it will be, like I'm saying that I've done research before I'll be fine, but I haven't done research in the UK and different countries of course have different attitudes to work and that kind of thing. I've been told positive things around um, the way like the UK attitude is to like work-life balance and that kind of thing but you never know until you really get there. Um, I don't know the ages the people I'll end up living with is a big scary factor because like most people who are doing study are much younger than me like I could end up living in accommodation with people who are half my age. That is not desirable. <laughs> um, because, like, I actually do get on quite well with young people, but that might just be in measured doses, right? Like, actually living with them, I might get really annoyed at their young person antics, and then I'm going to really annoy them because I'm like, you know, the middle-aged lady who spent 10 years teaching at university level, and who is just going to be like, you know, Un undesirable advice constantly at all times like diet personal hygiene relationships and study practices will all be noted and commented upon whether I want to or not it's just gonna come out because that's been a big part of my job for years when I've been helping run labs is you know, putting on events for young people and trying to convince them to go into the sciences and showing them what it will be like and giving them good advice for their career and stuff and I'm like, I probably shouldn't be doing that in my home. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, I feel like this uh, video is particularly chaotic and I have no idea how coherent I may or may not have been, I assume not very at all, and that's it. <laughs> okay, bye.